right, amen. Yeah, I know. It's really <laughs> we'll, 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 get it, we'll get it right one of these days. We'll get one of them $15,000 video systems. We'll have a guy sitting at the back pushing all the buttons. But no, I got my, my Samsung phone and a, and a $30 uh, bright light. But we'll get it all done. Amen. All right, amen. It is good to be saved. It's good to be in church. Proverbs chapter 28, we're going to look at one verse, and that's going to be verse 20. All right. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to the rich shall not be innocent. Let's pray, Father, again. It is good to be saved, and it's good to be in church. And Lord, we just ask you again to bless the message, Lord. And as we talk about the topic of blessings and Lord, we love you and thank you, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, last week, we started a little series, and I went to sort of the main, main kind of point because we were talking about giving. And the name of the, type of the message was Being the Blessing, Giving. And continuing on that thought, because, you know, it's not just being a blessing by giving. You know, we, we wanted to have a little collection for the cross and for the different work, and that's nice that people gave and things. But there's a lot more to the topic of being a blessing and blessings in just giving. All right? And just continuing on that thought of blessings. God wants to bless us. He wants us to bless him. And also God eventually, down the road, he wants us to bless others. And we're going to look at that All right, the next week or two here. Blessing means a thing conducive to happiness or, or welfare. All right, the Greek word, and I'm not a Greek guy, but blessings means happy. All right, so when you're blessed, God's making you happy. When you bless others, you're making them happy. All right, when God blesses us, he wants us to be happy. When we bless God, God is happy because his children are making him happy and blessing him. And when we bless others, all right, amen, others become happy because we have blessed them. All right? In fact, blessings from God started way back in the beginning, all right? What was the first thing? I don't think Annette's going to get this, but maybe. We'll see. Yeah, you're, you're my answer person there. What was the first thing that God blessed? Way back in Genesis chapter 1, I'll give you a hint. <laughs> they got the second blessings. The first things that got the blessing were the animals, all right? After, after he created the animals and the fish and all of that, Genesis chapter 1, verse 22, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. So he blessed the animals. Remember, they got, they got created before we did. And then he blessed us. All right, a few verses uh, later in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air of the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Well, we got a lot of creepy things out there. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created him, uh, he, him, male and female created he them. Verse 20, and God blessed them. Actually, we got the blessings and God said unto them, God said unto Adam and Eve, he said, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. In fact, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Those wonderful words in Revelation 4.11, and for thy pleasure they are and were created, reminds us that we exist because we were created by God to give him honor and glory for his pleasure, for his blessings. Right? God loves us. All right? The earth, that's all that's in it. God created for God's pleasure. He created us so that we could have fellowship with him. God loves us. God forgave us. God saved us from hell. God gives us eternal life. His light so shines upon us. God is wisdom. God is holy. God is just. God is sovereign. God is full of mercy. God is full of grace and kindness and long-suffering. God is all comfort. That's why God, the Holy Spirit, is called the Comforter. 
God is all powerful and all knowing and he's everywhere. God is our father and God is good and we ought to bless him for his pleasure. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 says, God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Isn't that a blessing that God is with us, and he walks with us, and he lives with inside of us? All right, and should we want to take God's blessing upon us and, you know, share God's blessings and be a blessing to others? Amen. Now, I know some of you are starting to get excited, and I know it's raining out. You say, yeah, Pastor, I'm going to run down Rockway Avenue. I'm going to start blessing people. Bless you and bless you and bless you. I'm getting excited about being a blessing. I'm getting excited, too. But before we start blessing everyone, all right, we got to just slow it down. Right, we've got an introduction here. And we got to look at what the Bible has to say about being blessed and staying blessed. All right, we're going to jump right into the point here. Being a blessing starts with blessing God. Because if you can't bless God, and if you can't please Him, and if you can't make Him happy, you're going to have a hard time with everything else. So being a blessing starts with God. Psalm chapter 103 says, verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. And when God blesses men, okay, when God blesses men, uh, they are thereby helped and strengthened. We get the blessing. And we get strengthened, and we get things worked out in our life. But when we bless God, does God really need our blessings? <laughs> does God need a little help? Does God have some problems in his life? All right. But our understanding of blessings, of course, is to be happy. But there's a tone of being thankful, having thank thankfulness. All right? When, God's, when God blesses us, we're helped in strength. When we bless him, we're saying, thank you, God. We're happy. All right? Let's break down Psalm 103 for a second there. You don't have to, you don't have to turn out. I'll just read it for you. All right? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. All right? We ought to thank God for all of his benefits. We ought to thank God for forgiving us. We ought to thank God for healing me and giving me good health. 3 John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospers. Good health starts with trusting and blessing God. All right? We ought to thank God for redeeming. He says there in Psalm 103, Who redeemeth thy life? All right? We ought to thank God for redeeming our lives. Why? Because, hey, I was once on the highway to hell, but now I'm on the king's highway. Why? Because he redeemed my life. That's why we get the song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We're, we all used to be wretches. But what happened? God redeemed your life. He gave you eternal life. You are on the highway to hell. Now you're on the king's highway. That saved a wretch like me. I was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I can see. All right, Psalm 103, thank you, God, for crowning me with loving kindness and tender mercies. It's not just kindness and mercies. It's loving kindness and tender mercies. All right, because when we say we're going to crown someone, what does it mean in, in our human terms? <laughs> I'm going to crown you. <laughs> you see me, I'm going to take a baseball bat, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you, or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to crown you, buddy. But when God says he's going to crown you, he says he's going to bless you. All right? And when God says he's going to crown you, he's going to bless you. He's going to crown you with love. He's going to crown you with loving kindness. All right? He's going to crown you with loving kindness. And he's also going to crown you with mercy. You see, when we show mercy against, against someone, just like we want to you know, crown someone 
When we show mercy upon someone, we don't do mercy the right way. Someone does something bad against us, what do we usually say? Or what do we usually do? I'm going to let that one slide. I'm going to cut your break. But I'm never going to forgive you. I'm never going to forget about it. And every time you do something stupid, oh, I'm going to bring it up. For the next 30, 40, 50 years, and if I can squeeze a buck out of it and hold it against you and use it against you, yeah, I'll show you a little mercy. But what does God use? He uses tender mercy. God is, is full of tenderness. He's, he's tender hearted. He's full of mercy. He says, son, you made a mistake. You sinned. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to put you back up on your feet. I'm going to send you on your way and do right. He's not going to hold anything against us. He's not going to, you know, extort us. He's not going to bring it up 30 times a year for the next 30 years. And he's not going to make a buck off you. You see how the difference between God's tender kindness and mercy is compared to ours? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. You say we, even Christians act like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Psalms 145, verse 10 says, All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord. All thy saints shall bless thee. We need to start blessing God. Psalms 34, verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord when I'm sick. No, it says, at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 96 says, Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. We're to bless God every day, all the time. And we're to bless him for all the wonders and all the things that he's done in our lives. You say, well, what are some of those things? Well, I just happened to draw up a little list of around 50 things that were, you know, we should be thankful and blessing God for. What are some things that we should be thankful and blessing God for? Pastor Hank, well, I'm glad you asked. You can bless God and thank him that, one, you're alive, <laughs> okay? Now, I know, I know heaven's good, and it's great, and it's eternal, but, you know, there is that fear of death and, and being in the hospital and getting run over by a bus and feeling the pain and all that stuff, but thank God and bless God you're alive. Bless God you can see. Bless God you can hear. All right, uh, me and my wife, we have this new thing with our granddaughter. We can thank the smartphones for that. Not only can we talk to our granddaughter, but now you got the thing video phone, the little button, you know, on the phone. It's like, hi, Sadie. Hi, Papa. Where's Guma? Well, that, that's what she says. If I talk first, she, wa she wants to go to Guma first, not me. But we can see. We can hear. We can talk. She's in San Diego, we're in New York, and I'm sitting in my chair, and she's running around within the living room, and, I, and I'm thankful. Bless you, Lord, I can have a relationship, even by distance. Praise God, and bless God, you can speak. Praise God, you can move. Now, I know, you know, I know we're all getting a little old, we all got the aches and pains, all right, but I can still do the two-step, I can still cut a lawn, I can still drive my car, and I'm thankful I might have wobbly knees and these kneecaps are going to fall off one day, but I can still move. You know, some of you old-timers are, I'm starting to think, man, that old people are a bunch of crybabies. Now, I'm getting those aches and pains, and I'm like, oh, man, this is what I got to look forward to. Too. <laughs> but thank God you can move, thank God you can eat. Are we having some pizza later? All right, a friend of mine retired in North Carolina. He sent me a message. Yeah, Hank, you know, 400 grand. We get a mansion. You know, we get low taxes. I said, but you don't got New York pizza. That's right. That's true. Yeah, you go 50 miles outside of New York. It's called cardboard and ketchup. We've had that in Ohio. We went to Mama Gina's. Me and such. I said, look, Mama Gina's, I mean, that's, it sounds Italian. We go in there, it's some crackhead winch with, with a cigarette in her mouth, and she takes the, oh, you're laughing, this is just a true story. She takes the, the cardboard, she puts it on a conveyor belt, and, you, and it goes through the thing, comes out 10 minutes later, 
Silk took one bite of it. She goes, I ain't eating this stuff. And I'm like, oh, not pizza. All right, but thank God you can eat. Thank God you can drink. Thank God you still have a sense of smell. Praise God you can touch. All right, some of us, uh, you know, like to touch our spouses. That's a good thing. Praise God you can read, sing, write, think. Thank God and praise God that we have emotions and feelings. Praise God you can get a good night's sleep. I don't struggle with that. I fall asleep in two minutes. Yeah, I might get up once or twice, you know, whatever, but I, I, I'm not one of those insomniacs. I, praise God I get a good night's sleep. All right, we should also thank God for the things we enjoy. All right, the first couple had to do with our health. All right, we can enjoy nature. All right, the rain, the change of seasons. I love fall. I love it getting cold. I love the leaves are dropping, the pumpkins. I start drinking pumpkin spice coffee now and pumpkin muffins and it. I love all the things in nature, the beach, the mountains, the leaves changing, flowers. I went, I went to Home Depot yesterday, I bought a bunch of mums for the house, all right? God created all that. Bless God for our pets, all right? I come home from work, cat jumps on my shoulder, dog jumps on my lap, we bond for 10 minutes. Everything that I was angry about has, has pretty much melted away. I praise God for our pets. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 10 says, A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast. Some of us come home and there's the dog. Ah, and, yeah, get out of here. You don't want to talk to you. I sit down. They don't jump on me. We, we hang out together for a few minutes. I like that. Praise God you got a roof over your head. Praise God you got clothes to wear. Praise God that you can hear and also appreciate the gift of music. All right? We're a small choir and a small music ministry, but they do a great job every week. They soften you guys up because I, when I come up here to be the bad guy, you're still running on the Holy Ghost music there. Praise God for books. All right? This is the number one book, but there's a lot of good books out there to read and learn from things. Praise God for technology. I know we make fun of the light and the phone and this and that, but there might be someone at home watching this on the computer right now. Who would have thought? All right? Praise God for the inventions. I thank, I don't know who did it, but I thank you, God, for the man and the woman that invented air conditioning. All right? And that's like at the top of my list. Ice cream, number two. All right? Cars, wheelchairs, roller coasters. We went out, yeah, I like roller coasters. Not the ones where they strap you in and you this, and then they go upside down, around, around. Get me one that was built in the 1920s, made out of wood, like in Coney Island, all right? We were in San Diego a couple months ago, and you just strap yourself in. You're like, man, that, that's it? Just a little thing that, and clap, 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 clap. You, think, you feel like the thing's going to fall off, and you have a great time. Yeah. I like, I, I, praise God, I don't, I don't know when you stop doing it, but I hope I can keep riding the roller coasters for a while. All right? Thank God for other things in our lives, all right? Thank God for laughter and humor, all right? I, I like a good laugh. I like jokes, all right? Funny moments. Thank God for being able to pray and worship. Thank God for helping people, all right? Thank God for, for him showing your purpose and direction in life. Praise the Lord when you accomplish a task. Listen, some of us are good at procrastinating. All right, when we accomplish the thing, it's, wow, I'm glad, I'm glad I finished it. Praise God for an answered prayer. Praise the Lord for when you get a kiss from your spouse or your kids or falling in love and getting married and having children and having someone that loves you. All right, praise the Lord for if you've actually had the opportunity to save someone's life. I, I, as a policeman uh, and, and as a civilian, I've actually saved two people. In my, in my life. One was on the, the 7 train by Shea Stadium. He was, he was in the middle of the tracks and there was no rock bed and all it was was a 100 foot drop to, to Roosevelt Avenue. And he was about to jump. I grabbed his arm. He fell down. I says, well, sorry, bud. If you're not climbing up, I got to let you go because I'm not going down with you. And I did. And I, did, I gave him the old heave ho and, and up he went. I saved someone from drowning one time. That was one of the most scariest moments of my life, watching someone almost drown, and, and the Lord put me there to save someone. All right? Praise the Lord for having a family, for brothers and sisters and cousins. Praise the Lord when he heals you, both physically and spiritually. 
Praise the Lord when you go on a family trip, your childhood memories, the time and places you grew up. I right? Praise the Lord for when you stand and you fall and you get back up again. Praise the Lord when you do good in school. A lot of kids don't like school anymore and it's tough being a teacher and I, and I, and I feel sorry for teachers in a lot of ways because there, there's a lack of respect. But if kids would listen to their teachers, we'd have a lot more smarter kids. All right? Praise the Lord when you learn how to forgive someone. All right? Thank God for the freedom we have in our country. Thank God for the opportunities to grow and learn as a Christian and as a citizen. Thank God for the joy and peace in my heart, that, that, in your heart. When, listen, there's some things I used to get really burnt out, and nervous, and uptight, and I just have peace about things now. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like totally, like, you know, 100% cured, all right? I still worry about some things. This is something, God take care of it. It's okay. I, I, I'm getting on. Maybe it has to do with age, or maybe I'm maturing as a Christian, all right? I'm thankful for, for God has given all of these things, and more importantly, I'm thankful for God who has given his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And like Doris read John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I mean, that's the best. I saved the best for last. And if you can get that down, boy, you're going to have a lot of blessings. All right, so if we can bless God and be happy and thankful, then the next thing about being a blessing is having or asking God to have a blessed attitude, all right? I mean, it's easy to, God, I love you. God, praise the Lord. God, thank you for my cat. And now you gotta go talk to a fellow human being. You're like, oh, that guy. Oh, he's, that's the guy that took my parking spot last week, or that's the guy that took the last chicken wing in church, and that's the guy that bugged me. Yeah, yeah you gotta have the right attitude when you're being a blessing. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 5 here. All right, let's turn to Matthew chapter 5 because the Lord teaches us how to have that blessed beatitude. You ever hear of the beatitudes? Okay, the beatitudes. If you want to know and you want to learn how to be a blessing to others, number one, you start blessing God. And number two, you ask the Lord how to become a blessing to others. All right, and Jesus gives a, an entire lesson on being a blessing here. Matthew chapter 5, we have the eight Beatitudes or eight blessings. All right, Beatitude or blessing number one. Verse 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So he starts off, blessed, happy. Happy are the poor in spirit. Poor in spirit means to be humble. Humility is the realization that your gifts and blessings are not of your own, but come from God. All right, to have poverty of spirit to be, means to be empty of self and be willing to be full and learning of God. All right, and if you're a humble person, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, means that those with the humble attitude and poor in spirit shall inherit the kingdom of God. All right, humbleness. I mean, I could preach an entire message on being humble. All right, but Jesus says, you're blessed if you're humble. All right, beatitude or blessing number two. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. You know, that's one of those, like, paradoxical verses, you know, you know it kind of means happy if you grieve if someone dies. Well, it, it has a lot to do with that. All right, but that's exactly what the beatitude means. The ministry of grief, mourning, sorrow, all right, affects and will develop a Christian character. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We all have uh, things that happen in our lives. Sometimes there's death. Sometimes there's a tragedy. Sometimes there's something going on. And what they need is they need us to comfort them. They need us to mourn with them. All right, when, when, a, when a good friend or a family member or, or someone in your family dies, it's nice to go to the funeral if you can, to show some support and mourn with them. Tribulation results in patience, Romans chapter 5. All right, tribulation yields to the peaceable fruit of righteousness, Hebrews 12. Godly sorrow can lead to repentance. Sometimes we make the mistake 
and we've done something wrong. And that, that repentance will lead to a blessing. Why should Christians mourn? Right? Obviously, we, we mourn for those that have lost a loved one, but we also mourn for the world, which lies in a, in a, in a world of sin and darkness. All right? They mourn for the sin that, that mars their own in, their in, uh, individual lives. All right? They mourn for loved ones and family members who are not saved. It's not just has to do with death, all right? Being sorrowful and mournful. We all have friends and family that are not saved, that have rejected God, that are tempting God, that are fighting with God. And we ought to mourn for them and pray for them that God touches them and that God saves them, all right? We all mourn for these sorrows, all right? Being, having sorrows is a common, uh, common connection amongst all people. All right, Jesus says here, you mourn, for they shall be comforted. When you mourn and you show some support, they get comforted. They get the blessing. All right? Beatitude number three, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Uh, again, meekness is very similar to being humble, but to be meek means, means to show willingness to submit, uh, to work under proper authority. Both Jesus Christ and Moses were meek. All right, Jesus submitted to the Father. Moses submitted to the Father as well. In fact, I think you'll get this one. And that, who was the meekest man besides Jesus in the Bible? Moses. The meekest man in the Bible was Moses. And he was the same guy that said, God, these Israelites, why don't you just kill them? <laughs> because they were, they were a nag. But meekness is not weakness. That's how the world seems to see humble, quiet, uh, submissive people. Right? They say, oh, you got to be tough. You got to go for yourself. You got to be number one. Meekness says, no, I'm not number one. All right? In fact, it's God, family, uh, my, my children, my job, and the missionaries, you know, the gardener, the, land, you know, the garbage man, and then me. Meekness means you last. All right? Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Meekness, lowliness, suffering, forgiveness, love. That's the character of the Christian. And when you get that blessing, you're going to inherit the kingdom of, uh, of the, uh, you shall inherit the earth. When you share the gospel message with someone, you ought to share it with meekness. Peter says here in 1 Peter 3, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of hope that is in you with meekness. All right? It shouldn't be, you better accept the Lord Jesus Christ or you're going to burn, you wicked, you bad man, you ugly man. You're... No, with meekness, kindness, and love. Hey, brother. There is a God. He's in heaven. There is a heaven. There's a hell. There's his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He died for you. He died for me that we may have eternal life. You know, you win someone over with kindness and meekness, not bitterness and, or vindictiveness. All right? Jesus says a meek person will be happy and blessed. All right? Beatitude number four, verse six. I'm just kind of rushing these, but we could spend a, 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 each message on one of these uh, blessed Beatitudes. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Everyone's hungry. Right? Well, some of us are hungry for power. Some of us are hungry for authority. Some of us are hungry for money, success, comfort. Some of us are even uh, searching and, and, and thirsting and hungering even after happiness. And some of those things aren't bad in and of themselves. But how many Christians hunger and thirst after righteousness? Being righteous, holy living, not cursing, right? not, not you know, lusting and boozing up and, and doing what the world does and just living right, being righteous, seeking. God, I'm a sinner. I, I got temptation, but Lord, let me, let me have some righteousness. I might be an example before my family and my church and my friends. Don't let me fall into the temptation of sin. I want to live holy. I want to live righteously. God says, if you seek that, you will be filled. 
You're not going to be filled with a chicken wing or a slice of pizza, but you're going to be filled with his righteousness. And when you're full of the Lord God inside of you and the Holy Spirit of God is pushing and directing and guiding and leading and convicting, you'll start living right. And when you start living right, you're going to be blessed. All right? Appetites fill the flesh, all right, but they only fulfill for a brief moment. The drunk is never satisfied after his drinking. The angry man is, will always be angry. The thief will always steal, but soon they will die empty and never filled with God's righteousness. And soon they'll be in hell where they'll be filled with anger and regret. Beatitude number five, verse seven, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. All right? The merciful care and reach to those who need help without demanding anything in return. I, I gave you the example in the message earlier how man looks at mercy, but I like the example of what we did this, uh, this past week with the victims of the hurricane in Puerto Rico. We showed them mercy. We got a room full of food. They need help, they need food, they need electric, they need gas, they need medicine, and just little Windsor Avenue Bible Church showed a little mercy and said, we're sending this all to you and we're not expecting anything in, the ret in, in return. You have the corporal works of, of mercy, all right? That's, that's physical. You feed the hungry. You give them drinks to satisfy their thirst. You give them clothes when they're naked. You give them a home when they need shelter. You comfort those that are even in jail, all right? We've all heard of prison ministries. A lot of people got saved in, in prisons under, under a pastor or a chaplain. Corporal works of mercy, visit the sick, bury the dead, mourn for them. Then you have the spiritual works of mercy. We admonish sinners. We instruct the uninformed, all right? There's a way of teaching and preaching the word of God to the lost. They might not like it, but the truth needs to be told. That's mercy. When I tell a lost person they need Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and they need to repent of their sins and they need to get right with God and they need to surrender their life to God, I'm, I'm not beating them up. I'm showing them mercy. I've just told them the truth. And when they get right, God will save them. You counsel the doubtful. You comfort the sorrowful. You be patient with those who wrong you. You forgive others and you pray for others. All right, that's the spiritual aspect of mercy. Right, you got Beatitude number six, verse eight. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Pure of heart means uh, the idea of a clean, honest heart, conscience, mind before God. It's, it's someone who isn't dirty, dirty spiritually with a sin. Um, what did we have the, I'll send someone right out, okay? Thanks. All right. The word dirty here has to do with sin. It doesn't mean you fell on the grass and you got, you know, your pants all, all dirty, all right? Dirty means sin and stains that come in contact with sin and, and the world. The heart, have one of the clean hearts connected with the mind, all right? It's the heart and the mind that imagines, that understands, that reasons, that thinks and believes and loves. And if we can have a pure heart over those things, we'll be blessed, all right? For they shall see God. This is true in two ways. When you become a born again Christian, you, I guarantee you'll see God. The very second you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, all right, and while we're alive here on planet Earth, the Holy Spirit of God, Jesus Christ himself, comes inside, lives inside of you, and I might not be able to physically see it, but I can feel it, I can experience it, and I, and I believe in it. That's called faith. The second thing is when we die, we will see God. Paul says, absent from the body, to be present from the Lord. That's why Job said, I will see him for myself and not another. Old man Job knew that he's going to see God someday. All right? And when you see God and you're saved, oh, is it not a blessing? <laughs> All right, verse number nine, beatitude number seven, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. This does not describe those who live in peace, but it describes those, those who are making peace, peacemakers. 
I have no control over what goes in over in Iran or North Korea or all these other countries in the world, Russia and this and that, but I could be a peacemaker in your lives, in my friends' lives, in our neighbors' lives, and instead of fighting and killing and threatening and being vindictive, we could be the peacemakers. Nice to have a little peace in the old neighborhood once in a while, right? Instead of the neighbor giving you the evil eye, was it nice that the old man waved to you once in a while and you waved back? Be a peacemaker. All right? One way to accomplish peace, and probably the only true way, is to preach the gospel of peace. All right? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 says, And all things are of God, who be reconciled to us by himself, by Jesus Christ, hath given us the ministry of, of reconciliation. You know, one of the ministries of a Christian is reconciliation, being a peacemaker. Right? We should be the peacemakers, not the killers and the haters. Why? Because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he is peace. Pretty soon, coming up around Christmas time, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the Christmas story. Child is born, son is given, and he's going to be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus left us peace in John 14, 27. Before he left, he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, but I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. All right? Jesus is peace. And when you have peace and you're a peacemaker, they will call you a child of God. For they shall, call, they shall be called the children of God. The Lord wants you to first be filled with his blessings of peace and then pass it on to others to be the peacemakers. All right, lastly, this is a hard one. Beatitude number 8, verses 10 and 11. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteous sake, for there shall be the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say of all manner evil against you falsely for my sake. It's nice to be the peacemaker, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you get a little credit, and you know, hey, I got everyone together, and look at me, you know, and it's nice to be meek, and you know, it's nice to want to see God, and I like to have the Holy Spirit, but you mean I'm going to be blessed if they kill me, or they persecute me, or they hurt me, or they speak evil of me? Yep. You want to be blessed? Be persecuted, <laughs> all right? James says in James chapter 1, My brother, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing that, that they are trying of your faith. Work with patience. Peter chapter, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, Beloved, think it's not strange concerning the fiery trial which is about to try you. He's saying, uh, he's giving us a warning. He's saying, you're not going through one. One's going to be coming. You're going to get one. You're going to get that fiery trial. But don't think it's strange, all right? Though some may think it's strange. You know, some Christian pastors are guilty, and this is said. All they preach is God's prosperity. Oh, come to my church. God will let you live to 200. God will give you a million dollars. He'll have a Cadillac in, in, in your driveway, and it's the prosperity gospel. And, and don't forget about your pastor. October's Pastor Appreciation Month. You know, take another collection for me. Prosperity, prosperity, but I'm here to tell you prosperity is good, but if you're a Christian, you're going to be persecuted. And it used to be safe to say, oh, we're in America, nobody's going to bother us. Oh, it happens now. It happens all the time. Some of you that still work in the office, just come in wearing a big cross and carrying your Bible and taking a church bullet and putting it on your desk. I guarantee within five minutes... Some atheist, liberal, God-hating worker is going to be calling up HR, human resources. We got a problem here on the 12th floor. You know, Brother Gordon brought a Bible. He put it on his desk. I'm going to file a complaint. I'm going to sue you for harassment. You're laughing. It happens. <laughs> it happens. In England, they had a, I had a, a, a flight attendant that was told to remove her cross when she works because the Muslim plane, you know, riders will be offended. You're going to be persecuted. Think it not strange. All right? Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, Peter says, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God. 
still, they're going to beat us up and persecute us and torture us and say evil things. And what are we supposed to do? Woohoo! Glory to God! Amen! Persecute some more. Bring it on! Bring it on! That's what we're supposed to do. And Jesus here concludes the message here. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Great! You just went through those little eight attitudes and you get them right, you get all the blessings. Jesus says, hey, hang on, don't worry about it. Great is your reward. And the apostle took this to heart because just about probably all of them died from persecution. All right? Acts chapter 5, verse 41 says, And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Why will the world persecute us? It's a fair question. I ask myself, oh, but I want to persecute little old Christians. Man, I love God. Good. Go to church on Sunday. You don't bother anyone. You know, we just want our little, you know, a little church to grow. Why would persecute us? Because the Beatitudes and blessings are completely opposite of the world's way of thinking. Let's be honest. We're, we're quite opposite on, on many things that are going on in the world right now. You want to be a blessing? Bless God first. Number two, ask God to have that blessing be added to. And then next week, the message is winding down. We're going to actually look to how to, all right, we've been talking about it, how to be that blessing to others. We're going to look at, maybe not next week, I may go in another, another week, but we're going to look at, I know one person that totally rejected and blew God's blessing, and then we're going to look at a, at someone that totally got a blessing from God and the result of that. So be a blessing. Bless God first, and then ask God to have that blessed be attitude. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, again, thank you for today. And Lord, we know that you've blessed us, and uh, you've loved us before we ever blessed and loved you. And that's a great gift from you. And Lord, we always want to bless you and be thankful for the things that you've done in our lives. And Lord, we do want to learn from your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and how we could be a blessing. And I believe when we kind of get those, those two things together, we can then be sent forth out into the, into the harvest, into the field, into the world, and be a blessing to others so that when they see us, they really don't see us, but they see you. They see little Christs. They see blessed people because they come and serve in the blessed God. Amen. We love you and thank you. Amen. Okay. Um, I'm also subbing as the uh, song leader, but let me just turn all this stuff off here. <laughs>